perfect. We are rolling. KJ, first off, how has it been preparing for the season in the midst of a quarantine? Is it as is it difficult to get yourself physically ready to go without having the benefit of OTAs and the, the facility and all that? Yeah, I would say it's definitely been different. Um, right now, I'm training on my deck. Right now, I, I usually go and, and work out in my facility or work out uh, with the Seahawks. But I'm on my deck, got my kettlebells, got my jump rope. And so <laughs> it is a little different. But, you know, we just got to do the best we can to prepare for the season, come in in as best shape as you possibly can. So you're just like everybody else. You've got kind of like the home gym wherever you can fit it in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And luckily, or thankfully, the Seahawks, they sent us a really good, like, package. They sent us, like, medicine balls, physio balls, uh, bands. And so it's, it's pretty legit gym I got set up on my deck. So I can't complain. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad you've got, like, at least your little, your little space. Um, yeah. We saw you guys are starting Zoom meetings, which is, I, I'm sure, different. And we saw Will Ferrell crash one playing Greg Olson. Has Coach Carroll done anything else to kind of keep you guys on your toes and surprise you? Because he's known for those kind of those, – those moments from what yeah. we've seen. You know, I knew Coach Carroll would get real creative with this whole Zoom thing. I'm like, if anybody will be creative, it'll be Pete. And um, so, yeah, you saw Will Ferrell popped in. We're still having our rookie talent shows, so – just because you were not in person, rookies, you still got to do your thing, get up and perform. And so um, it's been really cool, real creative. We Every Monday, we go over The Last Dance, you know, the Michael Jordan documentary. Oh, yeah. and so we, we keep it as, you know, as fun as possible like we always do. Has there any been any rookie with, like, a really A1 talent, like somebody who really surprised you? They're all bad. It's, <laughs> it's, they're all bad, per usual. <laughs> they get up, can't dance, can't sing, can't freestyle, so – they all the same. I, I, and you've, you've seen enough to know now that everybody is, everybody is kind of doesn't bring the A game. Oh, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Okay, the question kind of on everybody's minds, do you think the NFL will be playing games this fall? Do you think you'll be playing football on the field? I'm going to say yes. I believe that um, we're preparing, like we're, we're having these meetings, we're training, and I believe come, what, September mm – -hmm there'll be football. We're not sure what the fan situation will be. Um, hopefully there, there'll be fans in there. Just keep them super spaced out. It may have to be 25% field, 20% field, but there gotta be somebody in there booing or cheering us on. <laughs> it gotta be. How does that change? Like, yeah, obviously you've never really dealt with it before, but as you think through the game, how does it change without fans there? Because I feel like, especially at home, there's, there's obviously such an advantage and, and, uh, uh, benefit to having having the loudest crowd in the NFL. I'm to fans. They're just a part of the culture. It's like playing football with the football. It's like referees. It's like everything. Reporters on the sideline, and so fans are a big part of it. And you know, before every game, I look into the stands to see how filled it is, or if I'm on the way game, see how empty it is. And so it's just it's cool to see fans in the stands, and hopefully we can we can figure it out. Without fans, is the benefit that you and Bobby can make checks easier and like actually hear each other think? We, we will definitely be able to communicate way more and it will be easier. But you know, they're talking about pumping noise into the crowd, kind of like how the Rams used to do when they were in St. Louis. And so it can get difficult on the road. So we just got to see how loud the noise is pumped up in the stands. You and Bobby seem like you're so in sync on the field. You've obviously played together forever. Are you guys as in sync off the field? Do you guys have that, like, simpatico friendship off the field? Oh, no doubt. It's, um, you know, Bobby, he stopped by the house uh, earlier this week. My daughter had a drive-by birthday party. And so, you know, Bobby stopped by, showed some love. And um, you know, he's just been my guy for going on nine years now. Just um, when I never need relationship advice, dad advice, you know, football advice, I hit up Bobby like, hey, man, I need some help. And so he's always been there for me. He gives, good, you know, pretty good advice as well. <laughs> a good friend, Ben. Yeah, yeah. Well, you mentioned it. Your daughter had the drive-by birthday party, which is so much of a, a thing that's going on right now for a lot of folks. What is quarantine life like at the right house right now? What is that like? Yeah, so we have an 11-year-old. We have a 3-year-old and a 9-month-old. And so you can imagine we, we have our moments <laughs> in, in the right household. But um, overall, it's pretty good. We have a nice structure, nice routine going on. And, um, and so we, we're figuring things out. And just, you know, me and my wife, we're tag teaming it. So it's, it's pretty fun. 
have you found yourself becoming like a, a elementary school teacher as part of this quarantine? Yeah, so I, I take care of the three-year-old, and right now we're going over letters, we're going over shapes, and so my life is pretty <laughs> easy right now. <laughs> my wife is dealing with the uh, geometry and science, and so, yeah, I'm hands off with that. So I got, I got I feel to like, <laughs> I feel like all parents can relate to, like, the I'm trying to figure out my, my child's math equations for them situation. It's tough, man. It's, it's tough. And I'm like, do you not have a formula? Like, what's, what do y'all got going on? And so we, 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 we got to figure it out. You mentioned your house and we got a chance to see a little bit of it because you're, you and the family were featured on, on House Hunters. Was yeah. it fun to kind of, I think a lot of people know you on the field. Was it fun to show off your family and show off the KJ Wright who's like worried about heated floors and <laughs> like a man cave? Yeah, man, it was definitely a cool experience. House Hunters is my go-to show on HGTV. I love watching. Uh, I love guessing which house they're going to pick. And so, yeah, I just reached out to them and said, I would love to be on this show. And um, they made it happen. My friend, you know, is my, was my real estate agent, so he had some time on TV as well. And so it was pretty good. We had, a, we had a great time. That's interesting. So you reached out to them. They didn't come to you. I didn't know how that worked. Oh, no, no. Because, yeah, I was in the, in the midst of buying a house. And so... I asked somebody to reach out to them. I said, hey, can I be on the show? They said, yes, let's do it. And so it was just perfect. I still don't have my heated floors, nor my heated toilet seat. And so <laughs> I could have sworn somebody would go get it to me for Christmas. I was like, okay, somebody go give me at least a heated toilet seat for Christmas. But uh, it did not happen. Maybe that's a, that's a 2020 Christmas gift then. Like you're putting it out into the world. The heated toilet seat is doable. It needs to happen. I'm not going to buy it for myself because a lot of people know that I really want it. So <laughs> <laughs> Well, you made, you made an appearance on House Hunters. You're going to make an appearance on Celebrity Family Feud. Give me the behind the scenes scoop because I I love that show. Like, give me, tell me how it all went down. Not not you don't have to tell me who won, but just give me some behind the scenes. Man, it was fun. First of all, obviously Steve Harvey is just hilarious. The guy's cracking jokes on everybody. Nobody's safe around Steve. And um, it was just cool to see him. Like during commercial break, he would interact with the with the crowd and just have normal conversations with them. And after the show, you know, we talked about just life. And so Steve was, you know, phenomenal. I, I met some legends. I met Tori Holt, Heinz Ward, guys I looked up to my whole, my whole life. And so it was overall a great experience. Where are you in the, in the line of five? Because the guy, the guy right here is always the one who gets to talk to Steve the most. Yeah. And he gets the, the most cracks at answering the question. So where are you in the five? Um, so number one was Cam Jordan from the Saints. I was number three. So I was in, I was in a good spot. I, was, I, was, I liked where I was. <laughs> and, uh, I was like, I don't want to be last. And, uh, but they put me in number three, so I was cool with that. Number three is a good spot. You're generally the one who gets the most on the board. Like, obviously, we'll have to wait and see, but I, I, I like where you're at. Who was the wild card of the group? Because there's always one guy who's throwing out random stuff. Oh, I would say everybody did pretty good. I have to say Cam, probably Cam Jordan was, was a wild card. He, you know, he did most of the talking. I believe he was okay with his answers as well. And so I got to go back and, and you know, rewatch it. Was it difficult, just as you remember back, to come up with answers? Because you, you play at home and you're like, I am, I am the best yeah. at this. That, that's the thing. You come up with your answer in your head and then the dude takes your answer. So <laughs> you got to think of something on the fly real quick. And, uh, you know, my guy, uh, Joe Hayden, was beside me. He was asking, man, what you think, what you think? Because so I had to share answers with him. And so it, it was a little challenging. So it, but overall, you know, we had fun. We'll, we'll look forward to, to watching it. Um, I want to touch on the, the off-field work that you do because, uh, obviously, 2018 Walter Payton uh, Seahawks Man of the Year, uh, the nominee from the team, and he built wells in Kenya. But uh, it, there was even little small personal gestures. Recently we saw that you, you helped a Mississippi State student um, – just getting an internship at the NFLPA. Why is it so important for you uh, to continue to give back in, in ways both small and large? Because you don't have to do that, but you make a point of doing it. Yeah, I believe that's our duty as people. Our duty as people is to serve others and to you know, lend out a helping hand. That's just been something I've been taught since you know, I was a little kid. Grandma took us to you know, do charity events, you know, at the hospitals and nursing homes. And so it just makes me feel good that I'm in a position to just help other people as well. And so it's just in my character, it's in my DNA. It's just what I do. 
Do you have anything else that you're, you're cooking up either for the season or, or over the summer, obviously, given that yeah. there's some, some challenges? Yeah, just a little small things. Um, the Boys and Girls Club, you know, I'm passionate about kids. Um, they're open, you know, especially for parents that have to go to work. And so I'm just going to go to them the 25th here, here soon next week and just feed them. Just feed them, and, you know, because they have, like, box lunches. So I'm getting food trucks sent out to Boys and Girls Club just to, you know, give them something different you know, to eat. And, um, you know, I think that'll be fun. They'll enjoy that. That's awesome, man. Uh, good on you and, and, and keep it up. Uh, as, as we wrap things up, you're entering, I believe, your 10th season in the NFL. And you've, you yeah. have said before that you want to play 10 and then you're going to evaluate. Obviously, we got, there's a lot of season ahead. But <laughs> ha- have you thought about what the future holds? Oh, no doubt. I've been thinking about the future since like my fifth, you know, fifth year in the league because, you know, you never know when your career may end. And so I'm a man of many talents. Um, you know, I love, you know, obviously I love children. I love broadcasting. And I just love, you know, helping people. And so we'll see where that future leads. I'm brainstorming, thinking of ideas. But, you know, the next afterlife will be fun. And it'll, it'll, more than likely it'll be around football, but we'll see. That's awesome, man. Well, Good luck. Enjoy the enjoy the the deck workouts, and we're excited to get you guys back on the field soon. It'll happen. It'll happen. Thank you, man. Perfect. I'm going to stop the.